Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. What's the problem? I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. What are you talking about, Hal? This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize. In this exercise, you will learn to rig up parallax effect animations using the new CSS3 multiple backgrounds capabilities. Keep in mind that it may look choppy due to my video recording frame rate, but when you run these types of animations on your computer or website, they will appear much smoother. We're using a single div element to make all of the magic happen. Pure CSS and no complicated scripting. And I'll give you hints about when and why you would want to control the CSS behavior using JavaScript at the end of the lesson. What you see on your screen now is the finished product of the lesson. We're able to animate multiple background images inside of this container because CSS3 provides the capability to easily layer multiple images using the background image property. Each layer is set to move different distances or speeds if you will which creates the parallax effect and a cool 3D depth perception. The rocket you see is just a simple stationary image element inside of the div. And I think you're going to like how simple the code is to make the magic happen and it's all pure CSS. You can integrate sprite animations inside of the div to make even cooler effects. In a future playlist of videos, I want to deliver the contents of the Sprite Programming Mastery book that I wrote a few years ago. To all of you for free on videos to help you turbocharge your keyframe animations to an expert level. That book was only available for a short time because I wanted to deliver it to everyone free in video format after a few years. The people that bought the book way back then will have learned those skills already a couple of years ago. But I think delivering the educational material in video format will be much more empowering to everyone. That upcoming series of videos will show you how to use CSS3 and JavaScript to do magical user interactive things in your documents, such as game development in the DOM or on the canvas, Google type animated doodles, interactive animated applications, and much more. But we'll get into all of that later on when I begin that new series of videos. So if you take a look at the stars, you'll see that the furthest layer in the back is moving the slowest. Then the layer of stars on top of that layer is moving a little bit faster. And then you can see as the planet rolls along, it's moving faster than both of those layers. So we have planet1.png, then stars1.png, and star2.png. The stars are star layers. When you see how few lines of CSS it takes to make this happen, you're going to turn and slap the person that's nearest you. If nobody is near you or in your house, you will go outside to find a stranger to slap. You might even slap several people. We're going to start with the bare bones of a simple from and to keyframe animation. So for this div down here in the page with an ID of banner, we have an animation property set on it to run the animate background keyframes animation. In a linear fashion, the duration is going to be 50 seconds or whatever you want to set it as, and it's going to run in an infinite loop. And let me show you what this renders. It's just the, the structure of the page. And we'll just add a few more background properties. And we're going to use longhand background properties. So after background color for that div, we're going to put the background image property. And in that, we'll set the first URL, the first image background, which will be the planet. And mine is named planet1.png. Then we're going to set the background position. And for the planet, I'm going to use minus negative 120%. That way the planet starts off the screen and then 70 pixels down into the div. So this is my horizontal axis and this is my vertical axis. 
left and right, up and down. Then I'm going to set the background repeat property as no repeat for that planet because we just want the planet to render once and not repeat. And that's it for the planet. Now if you were to render this, you wouldn't even see it because it's sitting off the screen. Now all we have to do is animate it from these original coordinates. So we'll set background position to these original coordinates in the from and then in the to, we'll just copy that and change it up to where we want to animate it to. And I'll animate it to a positive 20% which will move it all the way across the screen and we'll just keep this at 70 pixels. Oh no, this needs to be set to positive 120 and this needs to be negative 20 to go from the right to the left. So now let's see what we have. Now you can see the planet is animating and that's a background image inside of that div. It's not an element. You can see that's going to animate all the way across. And you can fiddle with those numbers to make it travel a further distance on and off the screen. So just fiddle with these numbers if you want to change that behavior at all or the location that it starts and ends at. Now we can add the next thing that we want to have under that. So you can think of it as building from the top down. You're layering from the top down, starting with the planet. Then we can add another URL for another image. This is how we can add multiple images to the same div as backgrounds. And then the background position we'll set for that one will just be zero pixels, zero pixels for both the vertical and horizontal axis. And then the repeat will be repeat because we want that star field to repeat all the way across the screen no matter how wide the screen is. And before we go any further let me show you those images. Here's the planet1.png in my graphics editor and you can see it has a tramp it's a PNG file with a transparent background. Then the star let me expand this a little bit. The star1 image is Let's see, its uh, dimensions are about 1,000 by 500. And then the star 2, which is the final background layer, that has a uh, 500 by 500. The canvas size is 500 by 500. So that's star 2.png. This is star 1.png. And you can see star 1 has a transparent background. That way you can see right through it and plan it. One also has a transparent background, so you can see through these edges of it, and it's a nice round sphere. And then here's my rocket.png, which will be a final little element that we stick inside of the div that will sit stationary. All right, so now that we have the planet1.png and the star1.png set as the background image for that element, we also can animate the background position property for that, starting from zero picks zero picks for the horizontal and vertical axis and we're going to go to negative 1000 picks on the horizontal plane and then zero picks on the vertical plane so it'll just move to the left so over 50 seconds it will move 1000 pixels to the left and that was star one which is this image which is a thousand the canvas is a thousand pixels wide let's see what we get so now you can see we have the star field, the first star field, moving at a different rate than the planet. The planet's moving a little bit faster, which gives us a 3D parallax type, type of effect for depth perception. Now all we have to do is add the last one. So we'll put another image as the image background for that div and make that star 2.png. This one will also be positioned by default at 0 pixels, 0 pixels. And this one will also repeat across the entire screen. And we'll do a similar thing down here when we animate it. We'll start it at 0 pixels, 0 pixels and go to, instead of a thousand, we're just going to go negative 500 pixels and 0 pixels. 
And that's because this star 2 is only a 500 pixel canvas across. Okay, does that make sense? So we're going to move that one over 50 seconds. We'll move that one only 500 pixels to the left. Now let's take a look. So you can see we have two star fields moving at different rates. And then the planet is moving at a different rate from those others as well. And it's really because of the distance they are traveling. Since they're all traveling at different distances and they're all different sizes, you wind up with a parallax effect. And finally, I'll go into this div banner and I'll put the image, which is source of myrocket.png. And I just put the style directly in here because it's just a temporary object in there. You can also set its CSS up here in the style element. And that will just sit stationary somewhere near the middle we can put that on something like 45 and it will sit somewhere near the middle of the screen see there's our ship we have both star fields rolling along and there's our planet and look at the amount of code it takes to do that it's nothing and it's so simple and it really CSS3 giving us the capability to add multiple images as the background image for a single div container or any kind of container. And then you can uh, use background position for each one of those separated by comma. And then background repeat for each one of those separated by comma. And then in the uh, animation, the keyframes animation, you just change the background position from to whatever you want. And it's that simple. Let's take a final look at the finished product. Now using JavaScript, which you will learn in the new series of videos that I'm about to produce, you can learn how to do things like create video games. You can do Google style doodles, animated doodles, interactive animated applications. The user can have buttons somewhere on the screen or you can use touch events to move this rocket ship around. You can change the rates that all of these layers are moving. You can stop uh, a layer, stop all of the layers, and that can all be user interactive. So that's what you'll be learning in the new series of videos that's coming up pretty soon. This is just the tip of the iceberg and it's just pure CSS. What we're gonna dig into is learning how to work with the keyframe animations more in depth to an expert level and that would be the CSS portion of it and then we'll learn how to work with JavaScript to control all of this stuff at a real expert level and we'll also take a look at how to do things on the canvas that are similar the HTML5 canvas element can also contain animations that are user interactive and we'll be getting into all of that good stuff so I hope you've enjoyed this exercise, and I'll see you when we start that new series of videos. Bye-bye.